Welcome back to FT Markets. There are two major trends in markets at the moment, falling oil price and central bank bond buying. Here to talk through the implications for investors of those are Diana Choilova of Lombard Street Research and Andreas Utterman of Alliance Global Investors. Thanks for joining us. So Diana, the falling oil price obviously took a lot of people by surprise and certainly the extent of its fall. But do you see it as a net positive or as deflationary? It's definitely a net positive for the global economy. Uh, in the world of today, we very much need to rebalance the economy towards consumer spending. And the fall in oil prices does just that. The problem is that those who heard from the low, lower oil prices, the business sector in more general terms, tend to respond first. And the benefits of the lower oil price through increase in real consumer incomes mm -hmm. tends to come later. Mm -hmm. And that explains what we have seen in the market so far. But in our view, there is an upside to come from that development later into 2015. And Andreas, I mean, we have had evidence that it's so far that's not feeding through in the US to people spending their money, the money they're saving at the pump on, on buying more goods. I mean, we saw sales fall, I think, last time we had a report of it. So uh, a view of the same view, and is it going to feed through? Yes, no, I, I agree with that, what Diana said. Um, it's going to feed through. It's going to take some time. Um, the, you know, the lags are anything between three to six months in the U.S. and slightly longer um, for the other global economies. I mean, there is a, going to be a massive transfer of wealth between all producers. We're going to uh, lose out uh, broadly and then the, the you know, oil importing countries. But if you look at the countries that really rely on, on oil imports, um, Japan, um, China, and also to agree many European countries, those are the ones that really are in need of, of a boost, mm. and, and they will get that through that uh, oil price drop. So I think net net is going to be a positive. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem that some economists talk about is deficient demand in the global economy, and particularly in the Eurozone, where we, the European Central Bank is trying to fight deflation by uh, bond buying. This has sent bond yields down to negatives in some. I mean, is, how far down can bond yields go, and what does that tell us? about what's going on in the Eurozone economy. First of all, yes, deficient demand. Why do we have deficient demand? Many reasons for that. Demographics are obviously not, not favorable in the West. Uh, we've got still an enormous stock of um, private sector debt. Um, if you exclude the financials, we've made no progress in the past four or five years in terms of reducing that, so people are concerned about that still. Um, I think negative bond yields are a real, and, and QE, and zero short rates, are a real conundrum for the financial markets, which is why they're behaving the way they are. Um, you know, financial theory tells you that you need to discount future cash flows. The closer you get to zero or even negative, that becomes impossible. Uh, you get valuations that don't, make mu that don't make any sense. Nobody really knows whether the, the bond yields that we're seeing, the ultra-low bond yields across the yield curve in the U.S. and the negative yield, uh, bond yields in some of the yield curves in Europe are a reflection of QE and therefore manipulation. I personally think that's, that's, that's the likely reason, or whether there are indeed a, a reflection of deficient demand and just uh, basically a, a harbinger of, of negative growth. Diana, geopolitical risk is back on the, on the agenda big time. Um, I mean, obviously, Greece is one of the unknowns to some extent. Where, where are we going to go in the Eurozone with this? But I mean, just looking at all these trends, and European equities have responded very positively to um, the ECB, QE. What's the, where should investors be putting their money? Well, our view is that it's still the U.S. The problem is that ECBQE was the very right thing to do in the <coughs> euro area, but uh, not all of the euro area's problems can be solved by the ECB. And unfortunately, they've waited too long to come through with a sizable support for nominal demand in their economy. So you've already had those political tensions building up. Um, the periphery economy in the euro area have paid for the adjustment with a huge loss of output and a huge increase in unemployment. And even if ECBQE props up growth in the euro area, 
um, to let's say one or maybe even at best two percent over a couple of years that's not going to be enough to alleviate these strains so the political repercussions are going to continue uh, together with what Andrea said that this zone has not yet addressed its excessive uh, leverage properly either. Mm -hmm. um, when you look to the rest of the world, China, Japan as the other big saver economies, they are also, uh, they have either seen the imbalances that led them into the financial crisis get bigger or they have set off on policy paths that are not, um, certainly in the case of Japan, is very much the wrong thing to do. In the case of China, it is the right thing to do, but it's going to be disruptive. And then you look to the US, it's still the only major economy which has adjusted fully and is capable of achieving sustainable growth. The big question is that actually, with all these problems in the rest of the world, the dollar's going through the roof, and mm. how long can the US mm. really have its growth going with that major headwind on the horizon. So Andreas, would you agree we should stick with the US equities for the moment? I mean, our fixed income, we'd be writing them off for ages, but it hasn't happened yet. What's about to happen? Well, I think, I think fixed income securities uh, broadly for the OECD economies are going to have um, a very muted return, if at all. Um, that's, that's for sure. But w are they going to sell off in a massive way, the way that the current uh, the global economy's position at the moment, I don't think so either. I think, yes, U.S. assets will be a reasonably good bet, particularly in dollar terms, for 2015. But overall, I expect more of the same. I think it's going to be a single security selection game. Um, we continue to like, and I continue to like, local currency emerging market bonds. I think they will earn their risk premium. Um, but, but, you know, broadly, it's going to be very, very specific. And currency movements are going to continue to play a major role in terms of the overall return that investors can get. So depending on what your funding currency is, you'll have to look at that very, very carefully. Many thanks indeed for joining us today.